Hello students, welcome to Pi Academy, the place for mathematics and science. Dear students, you all know that day before yesterday, that is on 15-7-2020, the Central Board of Secondary Education released class 10 board results, right? In that, many students have secured excellent marks. Therefore, Pi Academy would like to extend our hearty congratulations to all the students and we pray the God to bless them with a great success in their forthcoming academic performances as well. Meanwhile, Pi Academy would also like to extend our best wishes to the students, those who are appearing for 2020 and 21 examinations. Okay, dear students, let's go for today's class. Dear students, every day we see many things around us, right? It may be the celestial bodies like stars, planets, moons, nothing but satellites. The terrestrial bodies like plants, animals, human beings, birds, vehicles, mountains, flow of water, sand, rock, mud. Is it not? And we will also we will also experience day and night. Then the seasons like summer, winter, and rainy. We will also observe some of the natural phenomena like sun rising, sun setting, new moon, full moon, formation of rainbow, then the reflection of light. Every day we come across many of these things. Then, dear students, have you ever thought how much knowledge we have about all these? Yes? Have you got thorough knowledge about all these? What do you say? You may be having the knowledge about some of them, but some are not. To study about all these in detail, we have a separate branch and we call this branch as science. What it is? Science. Then how do you define Science. So, science is a systematic study of knowledge. Here are right. A systematic study of knowledge. And to learn anything systematically, nothing but to have the thorough knowledge about any concept, it is much needed to question ourselves. What is that? Imagine you have chosen a thing, you have to question yourself that is what it is, how it is and why it is. If you are able to answer for all these, definitely your knowledge will be enhanced. Therefore, to study about the objects in detail, again the science has been subdivided into three branches. Can you recall them? Yes, they are. One is physics, second one is chemistry and third one is biology. All these will study about the objects only, things only, the substances only but in different angles. In today's class, we are going to focus on chemistry. Dear students, in this academic year, we have five, sub five chapters in chemistry. They are First one is chemical reactions and equations. Second one is acids, bases and salts. Third one is metals and non-metals. Fourth one is carbon and its compounds. And fifth one is the periodic classification of elements. So let's go for begin the first chapter. What it is? It is chemical reactions and equations. Chemical reactions and equations I hope that you are very familiar with this chapter because in your previous classes also you have come across many chemical reactions is it not okay let's go for discussing this chapter in detail and we have heard many times chemistry is like a evaporating subject because once we understand that 
after some time will go for forgetting it it is not possible definitely you can make this chemistry as condensation subject that is whatever the concept you learn in chemistry can be stored in your mind permanently if and only if when you have the when you understand the basic knowledge about chemistry then you just first recall what is chemistry what you have understood chemistry it is no doubt you will tell that it's a branch of science then what it deals with chemistry is a branch of science which deals with a matter about that matter what it may be its composition maybe its structure maybe its properties and behavior as well as the changes it undergoes with other matter got it so now let me go for writing the definition of chemistry here i have written the definition of chemistry just to go through this a branch of science which deals with matter including its composition structure properties and changes it undergoes when it reacts with other matter is called chemistry just let me give you a simple example matter what is matter we define this as anything that has mass and occupies space is called a matter then i'll go for taking an example for matter it is you take this as water then you, even you also know its chemical formula what is its chemical formula it is h2o right then it is a matter the branch of science which deals with the matter including its composition composition means ingredients what are its ingredients water is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen its composition of hydrogen and oxygen these two together make water then structure what about the structure of water can be shown water molecule can be shown like this in general we can we draw in this way it is water then the structural formula of water can be shown like this this is next properties you know that water you can describe its property without changing its identity even with changing its identity water what is its color it is colorless what is its boiling point boiling point is it is 100 degree celsius right then when when it reacts with sodium what happens when water reacts with sodium then it produces the compound called sodium hydroxide with the liberation of hydrogen gas got it so this is the meaning of chemistry now let us get the detailed information about all this matter composition structure properties and the changes here i'll go for writing one by one first one is it is matter just we have defined what is matter anything that has mass and occupies space is called matter once i repeat anything that has mass and occupies space is called a matter now let me show you some of the matters you identify and just go for answering to my question dear students here we have some of the matters now let me show you one by one observe and tell what they are and similarly even you should keep on answering to my question this is first one what it is yes you are right it is a piece of wood what is its physical state yes you are right this is solid then what we have taken in in this beaker yes you are right it is water what is its physical state it is liquid then here we have 
empty bottle water bottle is there could you tell what is inside it you are right there is a which is a mixture of many gases similarly here also we have a balloon what is there inside it here also a which is a mixture of many gases we can say that in the uh, physical state as gas now observe can you see can you tell what are these yes these are zinc granules you have already seen all these in your previous classes then what about this it is a nail which is made of iron even in your previous classes you have used a deep purple color solution right could you name this yes it is potassium permanganate right now i'm going to group these matters into two types see this is first group and this is second group so based on their physical properties you said that so you you identified them as solid liquid and gases and based on their chemical nature what do you say about these what do you say about these two yes these two are elements right and what do you say about potassium permanganate it is a compound dear students according to my point of view whatever the uh, whatever the matter we observe they are, they are all chemicals because they are made up of one or the other things now let me give you more information about this dear students now i give you some of the examples for matter nothing but the chemicals and you are going to tell their composition nothing but ingredients In ingredients means the uh, these are the things from which the given substance is made up of for example we we know how to prepare a tea and what all the ingredients that we use for preparing tea we go for using uh, water milk tea powder sugar so then after boiling all this then we get tea right so these are all ingredients of tea similarly i go for taking some of the example for matter first one could you tell what is the universal solvent that we are using every day yes you are right water what is its chemical formula it is h2o then what are its composition it is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen compositions are hydrogen and oxygen similarly and could you tell which is the natural gas or the main component of compressed natural gas you are right this is methane what about its molecular formula CH4 then composition it is made up of one atom of carbon and four atoms of hydrogen is it not i'll ask you one more thing then could you tell which is the most abundant gas present in our atmosphere no doubt you say that it is ox uh, nitrogen then next to that oxygen and you also know that when a substance is burnt which gas is released you are right it is carbon dioxide carbon dioxide what is its molecular formula this is co2 then what are its composition it is made up of one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen then in your previous class that is in 8th standard you had used a sky blue color solution can you tell what it is in one of the chapters called materials metals and non metals yes you are right this is copper sulfate copper sulfate and molecular formula cu cu so4 right copper sulfate and the composition it is made up of one atom of copper one atom of sulfur and 
four atoms of oxygen. Got it? Like that, we have plenty of chemicals, and these chemicals have some ingredients which we call the composition. Now let us come across the structure. How these uh, ingredients will be arranged? Let me show you that. Before that, you just go for copying from there to here. First, you have to write the definition of site, a systematic study of knowledge. Second, bra site heading, branches of science, physics, chemistry, and biology. Then write the definition of chemistry. After that, no need to copy these. Instead, you can go for this one. Matter, next composition. Yes, right. Now let us come to know the structure of these matter. Here, just I'll go for taking the first example that is water, H2O. In that, hydrogen and oxygen will be arranged like this. It is oxygen and it holds two hydrogen like this. And let me take another example like CH4 which is methane. The structure of this methane can be shown in this way. One carbon atom holds four hydrogen atoms. Similarly, a gas waste when a substance is burned, it is carbon dioxide, CO2. Here, one carbon atom will hold two oxygen atoms. So now, we've got the definition of matter and we have come to know its composition, then the structure. And another point regarding matter, what is that? Properties. Then what are those properties? First you recall the meaning of properties. It is nothing but properties are the things which describe about a matter. How it is, what it is, then what happens when it reacts with the other matter. To know, we can come to know all this in case of properties. And these properties can be divided into two types. One is physical properties and second one is chemical properties. Then what are these? Physical properties, that means the properties which describe which describes the matter without changing its identity. Earlier I gave you the example in case of water. See that without changing its identity, uh, we can describe its, its uh, boiling point as its boiling point it is 100 degrees Celsius. Freezing point 0 degrees Celsius. Right? And it is colorless tasteless. See, in describing all these qualities, here the water is not at all changing its identity. Is it not? But chemical properties, these are the properties which describe about a matter by changing its identity. Again, I'll take the simple example. Water, H2O. You go for taking some amount of water in a beaker. Just I am making you to recall a standard concept and you will take a dry sodium metal and put that on the surface of water. What happens? It start whirling and the, the fumes start coming out. Right? That means the reaction is going on. Here, the water reacts with sodium and produces a compound called sodium hydroxide and the gas liberated is hydrogen so it has changed its identity see water has converted to then sodium hydroxide then hydrogen gas similarly you go for taking a, a small piece of paper you burn it on burning what happens after burning we get the ash right see here the paper has changed its identity so it belongs to which one whether it is physical property or chemical property it comes to chemical properties then now we'll move on to another one that is the changes it a matter undergoes for this purpose 
Now I'm going to take a piece of paper. Look here. Here, two papers are there of same size. Got it? Same width and same size. One paper, I'm just going to crumple it. Then, does it lose its identity? Now, I'm going to open it up. Yes. Look here. It does not lose its identity. That means no change is observed. Whereas in this case, now I'm going to burn it. Observe this. Now this paper is burning. After burning, what will get? You can notice that ash is produced. So here, the, this paper has lost its, its identity. Got it? So by burning, a new substance is formed. By burning, a new substance is formed. But in this case, no new substance is formed. And the changes, the change in which no new substance is formed, this is called physical change. And the change in which new substance is formed, this is called chemical change. Just I have taken one example that is paper. On when the paper is crumpled, then no new substance is formed because on, unfold, on unfolding it again we get the same substance only. That is what we say is an example for physical change. But on burning, it loses its identity. We get a new substance that is called ash. That is an example for chemical change. I go for giving you one more example. Observe this. Could you tell what it is? It is an apple. When you keep that as it is, you won't find any changes. But you just go for some part of it and the piece is taken this side. Then do you observe any change after some time? Certainly, the flesh of what the flesh of apple turns brown. That is an example for chemical change. Got it? But when the, when an apple is cut, so it does not lose its identity. Hence, that belongs to physical property. Similarly, you may go for taking some banana. Look here. Here you can observe that uh, some banana will be green in color and some will be yellow in color, right? And some will be then uh, brown. You can observe that the green green one after some days it, it becomes yellow. Means after ripening it becomes yellow. After over ripening it turns brown. That means it for which changes it undergoes? It undergoes for chemical change. Followed. Yeah. Dear students, we have got information about the composition, structure, properties and the changes a matter undergoes. Now, we will move on to the further part of uh, chemistry. Before going to the further part, just little bit information about physical and chemical changes, what you have learnt in your previous class. We, we know that physical change, whether it is permanent change or temporary, it is temporary change, right? What about chemical change? Yes, once a substance loses its identity, we cannot get it back. So it is permanent change. Chemical change is permanent and which is reversible and which is irreversible. So physical change is reversible, whereas Chemical change is irreversible. Now, dear students, to understand about this chapter, we need to go through some more basics of this chapter. So, in matter, in the beginning only, you classified matter into two groups. One as elements and second one as compounds, right? Let us come to know some of the important Basics. First one, element. What is an element? 
a substance which is made up of only one kind of atoms is called an element example you go for taking the element called iron a piece of iron is made up of only iron atoms no other atoms will be there then it is a zinc granite it is made up of zinc atoms only so such a substance is called an element a substance which is made up of one kind of atoms only is called an element dear students you must know the first 20 elements in the periodic table can you recall them one by one yes the first one is first one is hydrogen and its atomic symbol is h second one it is helium h e third one lithium fourth one beryllium fifth one boron sixth one carbon seventh one nitrogen eighth one oxygen ninth one fluorine tenth one argon eleventh one it is sodium and a nothing but natrium twelfth one magnesium thirteenth one it is aluminium fourteenth one silicon fifteenth one phosphorus sixteenth one sulfur seventeenth one chlorine eighteenth one eighteenth one it is argon and tenth one is actually it is neon nineteenth one potassium twentieth one calcium so these are the first 20 elements you must remember i have written them in order only then other than this we must also know some other elements like what is ml it is manganese zn it is zinc fe iron ag silver B A barium then A U this is gold so these are the some other elements so this is some of the basic information from hydrogen to gold you must remember this atomic symbol see first one is hydrogen second one helium third one lithium fourth one beryllium this is boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine neon sodium magnesium aluminium silicon phosphorus sulfur then chlorine argon potassium calcium manganese then zinc iron silver barium then gold in addition with that you can also go for i what is that iodine iodine clear up then one more pb what is that plumbum nothing but lead hg this is mercury okay then please go for writing from here to here once I tell you, see that you will go for writing the structures of these. Then after that, the changes. If you want, you can go for making it as column. Physical change and chemical change. See here, what is physical change? The change in which no new substance is formed. Here, the change in which new substance is formed. Then this is temporary change and this is permanent change. This is a reversible and is irreversible.
and you can also give one one example after that the basic we are focusing on basic terms in that first i have taken element no need to write the definition just you can recall a substance which is made up of only one kind of atoms is called an element and you have to copy all these with their names right head beside that right its name what is that hydrogen this is chlorine this is gold or aram this is iodine then hg it is mercury copy this now let's move on to understand about second term which i have already learnt in your previous class i go for choosing any one of these elements let me take sodium n a we know that sodium is an element and it is made up of sodium atoms only right now i am going to take one of the atom of sodium in one atom some subatomic particles will be there what are those subatomic particles protons electrons and neutrons will be there then how many protons and electrons neutrons will be there in sodium atom that can be decided by its atomic number atomic number of sodium is 11 number of protons present in present in an atom is called its atomic number it is 11 then here i'll write how will be its and even there will be equal number of electrons in a neutral atom that is there will be 11 electrons also and these electrons are arranged in different energy levels called shells which you have already learnt in your previous class look here sodium here total 11 electrons are there in the first shell it can accommodate only two electrons in the second shell it can accommodate eight electrons total how many are there now 10 but total number of electrons in one atom of sodium 11 will be there and one electron will be in the outermost bit similarly i go for taking oxygen oxygen what is its atomic number it is 8 then here let us see the arrangement look here in the first shell two electrons second shell total eight are there in the second shell remaining six electrons will be there because the capacity of the second shell is eight so we can accommodate six electrons easily now total eight electrons are there so this is the way of arranging the electrons in the various shells of an atom of the element what do you call this electrons arrangement this is called electronic configuration electronic configuration And why should we come to know about electronic configuration? The first thing you can come to know how the electrons are arranged in the different shells, and the second thing, the number of valence electrons. Valence electrons means electrons in the outermost orbit. See that valence electrons. In case of sodium, it is one. Oxygen here six are there, and we can also decide. whether an atom is stable or unstable got it if it is stable it does not undergo any chemical reaction if it is unstable it will it will be having a tendency to undergo chemical reaction so that stability can be decided by observing the number of electrons in the outermost orbit if there are eight electrons in the outermost orbit then we can say that it is stable now you tell about sodium how many electrons are there there is only one electron whether it is stable or unstable it is unstable so it has a tendency to undergo chemical reaction how it undergoes chemical reaction by losing the electrons the students for as i said for stability there must be eight electrons if more than for more than four electrons are there in the outermost orbit it will gain the electrons if less than four are there then it will lose its electron got it if four are there it start sharing its electrons here 
there is only one electron hence it loses one electron here what about in case of oxygen there are six electrons more than four therefore it has an ability to receive two electrons got it similarly i just go for taking one more example let it be chlorine what is the atomic number of chlorine it is 17 then what about its electronic configuration it is 2 8 and 7 2 electrons in the first shell 8 electrons in the second shell and 7 electrons in the third shell and its structure can also be shown like this just by observing this only you will be able to tell whether it is stable or unstable what do you say it is unstable why there are 7 electrons in its outermost orbit that is outermost shell whether it donates the electron or receives the electron yes it receives the electron how many it can receive one electron it can receive one electron clear up by an atom attains the stability by losing gaining or sharing the electrons by doing so an atom become charged and we call this charged atom as ion so this is third important basic term ion what is ion ion is a, a charged atom how an atom get to charge by losing or gaining and this ions can be classified into two types they are one is cation cation and second one is anion cation means the positively charged atom positively charged atom is called cation see the cat in the here only you can come to know there is p it, it looks like plus cation how an atom get positive uh, how an atom becomes positively charged yes by losing look here here sodium has lost one electron it becomes positively charged atom and we write that as Na1 plus as it has lost one electron similarly oxygen see that it gains two electrons and becomes negatively charged atom we write it as O2 minus understood what about chlorine it receives one electron therefore whether it is cation or anion anion so we can write it is chloride ion this is oxide ion this is sodium ion so now i am going to give you the list of ions which is very important to learn the concept effectively yes now uh, you have copied up to them you just go for writing the electronic configuration of sodium oxygen and chlorine and write the definition of ion also don't copy this one write up to it yes dear students we have already called the electrically charged atom as ion there are two types cation and anion cations are positively charged atoms anions are negatively charged atoms right then here I have written both simple ions and compound ions which you have already learnt in 9th standard. These are much needed. Please learn this. Now I am going to read this. Look here. First one is it is hydrogen ion. Lithium. It is it, sorry, it is lithium ion. This is sodium ion. You know that how it is. Lithium, its atomic number is it is, its atomic number is 3 electronic configuration is 2 comma 1 it can lose one electron therefore it becomes 1 plus sodium we have already come to know sodium ion this is potassium ion it is atomic number is 19 we can write 2 comma 8 comma 8 comma 1 it can lose one electron then next one is uh, it is it is silver ion it is magnesium Ion. Magnesium, its atomic number is 12 and electronic configuration is 2, 8, 2. Whether it can lose the electron or gain the electron, it, 
can lose the electrons. So, how many electrons it can lose? Two. Therefore, its charge is two plus. Hope that you can understand. Here, calcium. Calcium ion. This is copper ion. Pb two plus. Lead ion. It is Mn two plus. Manganese ion. Zn two plus. Zinc ion. Fe two plus. Iron ion. Ba two plus. Barium ion. And Al three plus. It is aluminium ion. And one more compound ion is there. NH four one plus. It is ammonium ion. Clear? Please, you have to write. If, if possible, you have to write even the names inside the bracket against each of these. Okay. Next, let us come across anions. Yes, it is fluoride ion. Fluoride. Don't read it as fluorine ion. Then this is I one minus iodide ion. Br one minus. It is bromine ion. This is chloride ion. This is O two minus oxide ion. It is sulfide ion. Sulfide. Then this is N three minus nitride. Nitride ion. Br one minus bromide ion. Then next we have some compound ions. These are very important. O O H one minus. It is hydroxide ion. Hydroxide ion. <coughs> CO three two minus carbonate ion. Carbonate ion. Then HCO three minus. It is hydrogen carbonate ion. CH three CO one minus. It is acetate ion. Acetate ion. Next, here hydrogen carbonate. It's already over. CnO O three one minus. This is chlorate ion. Next, this is NO three minus. This is nitrate ion. NO two one minus. It is nitrite ion, which I have already learnt in your previous class. SO four two minus very important. This is sulfate ion. Then SO three two minus sulfite ion. SLU PHI TE sulfite ion. Cr two O seven two minus. It is dichromate ion. Dichromate ion. And this is HPO four two minus. Hydrogen phosphate ion. Hydrogen phosphate ion. What about PO four three minus? This is phosphate ion. Got it? So you must practice all these. Please go for copying from here to there. Why it is necessary to know all these ions with their charge, dear students? These can be used for forming, to uh, for writing the chemical formula of a compound. Even you have got information about a compound. What? Uh, how do you define this? We know that if two or more elements combine chemically with a definite proportion by mass, is called A compound, for example, hydrogen and oxygen they react with each other to form a compound called water, which we have learnt in our previous class. H two O, got it? And sodium and chlorine, these two will react with each other and to form a compound called NaCl, sodium chloride. To write the chemical formula of The compounds we can go for using that. I'll take an example. How to write NaCl? See that here we have written Na and here Cl two, chlorine molecule, and this is sodium. These two will react with each other. Will give NaCl. How to write NaCl? It is very simple. Na. What is its charge? 
Have you written here? Yes. Its charge is 1 plus. Even you can go for taking valency also. 1 plus. And Cl. What is its charge? 1 minus or valency is 1. Then crossing over charges. Observe it by crisscross. We can write Na 1 and Cl 1. You can write it as NaCl. Clear up? Like this, it will help us to write the names of, uh, to write the chemical formula of many chemical, many compounds. Now let us come to know how to write the chemical formula of the compounds. I am going to give you some of the, some more example. And before that, you just observe how it will be easier to write. Look here. Your hydrogen. Here, bromide. You can, these two, these two, two, these two ions will form a compound called hydrogen bromide. HBr. See how simple it is. Here, hydrogen. Here, chlorine. This is HCl. Understood? Now, H. Here O2 minus is there. H1 plus O2 minus. Crossing over balances. It becomes H2O1. Clear up? Similarly, you can go for many. See that sodium is there. Here oxygen is there. Here only I will write Na1 plus O2 minus. Then this can be written as Na2O. That is sodium oxide Na2O in this way you can go for forming plenty of compounds I'll take some more examples see that Ag it is Br silver and this is bromide ion silver bromide silver chloride silver oxide silver sulfide silver nitride similarly when you go for taking magnesium Magnesium fluoride, magnesium iodide, magnesium bromide, magnesium chloride, magnesium oxide, magnesium sulfide, magnesium nitride. And here OH is there, magnesium hydroxide. Did you understand? Here I'll, I'll take one more example in this side. Observe this carefully. Magnesium hydroxide, Mg. What is its charge? 2 plus, Mg2 plus and hydroxide and its charge is 1 minus then crossing over charges you will get mg oh twice look here mg 1 oh 2 so we can write like this mg oh twice and this is the chemical formula of magnesium hydroxide got it then given we can also go for see that magnesium carbonate, magnesium acetate, magnesium hydrogen carbonate or magnesium bicarbonate, magnesium chloride, magnesium nitrate, similar magnesium sulfate. Followed here I'll write that. Another example magnesium sulfate Mg2 plus SO4 2 minus. Mg2 SO4 twice can also be written as here charges are same hence you can write it directly Mg SO4 this is the chemical formula of magnesium sulfate in the same way you can also go for applying these charges with these simple and compound anions now let us go for writing the chemical formula of some of the important compounds which we come across in this chapter chemical reactions and equations yes you you have to copy from here to day now let's go for writing the chemical formula of some of the important compounds see first i have taken the acids these are the acid which we come across in the chapter chemical reactions and equations what is the chemical formula of first one sulfuric acid it is h2 Yes, for 4 Then hydrochloric acid. This is HCl. Nitric acid. It is HNO3. Then acetic acid. It is CH3 
C O O H. Please do remember. Very simple. By using those only, we are writing H two S O four H one plus S O four two minus. See the H one plus and S O four two minus crossing over charges H two S O four S O four. Got it? And HCl, HCl three, CH three COH, carbonic acid. It is H two CO three. Observe the size of the letters. What I am going to write. Formic acid is also called methanoic acid. It is H COOH. Then sulfurous acid. It is H two SO three. Clear? Please go for copy this. These are the important acids. Again, I am reminding, which we use in the chapter chemical reactions and equation. Then I go for taking some of the bases. These are the important bases that we are going to use. First one, sodium hydroxide. See that how simple it is. Na one plus hydroxide OH one minus. See Na one. OH one. We can write it as Na OH. Observe the letters. First one capital A is small. This is capital capital. Potassium hydroxide K one plus OH one minus. Then crossing over balances. So our charges. It is K O H. Then magnesium hydroxide, which we have already written, Mg two plus OH one minus. Mg one and OH twice. Next, calcium hydroxide. It is Ca two plus OH one minus. It is Ca OH twice. Aluminium hydroxide. Al three plus. Observe Al three plus aluminium hydroxide. OH one minus. Observe Al. OH, what should be written? Thrice. Barium hydroxide, Ba two plus OH one minus. Ba OH twice. Then copper hydroxide, Cu two plus OH one minus. We can write it as Cu OH twice. Clear up? These are the important bases. Please go for copy. Here, I have I have written some of the oxides. Observe, lithium oxide, sodium oxide, many are there. Let's go for writing the chemical formula of all these. Lithium oxide. What is its formula? L I. Is it right? L I O. You just observe. L I one plus O. O Two minus, so crossing over charges. A light two O. Clear up. Next, sodium oxide. Observe Na two plus. Sorry, Na one. Na one plus. Oh, here it is. Na one plus. And O. Two minus crossing over charges Na two O. Next, potassium oxide K one plus O two minus. So it will be K two O. Magnesium oxide Mg two plus O two minus crossing over charges Mg two O two. Two to get cancelled, so just we can write MgO. Then sulfur dioxide, sulfur dioxide O two. Then calcium oxide Ca two plus O two minus cancel. It is Cl. Copper oxide Cu two plus O two minus again get cancelled just to Cu. Mercury oxide. It is Hg two plus O two minus Hg O. 
एल्यूमिनियम ऑक्साइड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ये एल थ्री प्लस वो टू माइनस क्रॉसिंग ओवर चार्जेस ये एल टू वो थ्री नेक्स्ट जिंक ऑक्साइड इट इज जेड एल वो जेड एल टू प्लस वो टू माइनस इट विल बी जेड एल वो देन कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड यू कैन राइट सी वो टू सल्फर ट्राइऑक्साइड You can write yes O three. Then ferric oxide. It is Fe two O three. Then ferrous oxide Fe three O four. So these are the important oxides which we come across in this chapter. I am not going to take any extra uh, chemical formula. Just I have just listed the chemicals which we come across in this chapter. Please go for writing from. There to here. Observe. Here I have written some of the salts, and these are all chloride salts because the chlorine is the common ion which is present. Observe hydrogen chloride, lithium chloride, sodium chloride, potassium chloride, and so on. Let us write them. Hydrogen chloride. See that H one plus Cl one minus crossing over charges. It will be H Cl. Lithium chloride, L I one plus H one plus sorry C L one minus. Same thing L I C L. Next, sodium chloride. It is N A one plus C L one minus. Crossing, you will get N A C L. Potassium chloride, K one plus. Cl one minus. It is KCl. Silver chloride, Ag two plus Cl one minus. Now observing Ag one Cl two. It is Ag Cl. Ag silver is one. Ag one plus Cl one minus. It is Ag Cl. Magnesium chloride. This is Mg two plus Cl one minus. Mg Cl. Next, calcium chloride Ca two plus Cl one minus. It will be Ca Cl two. Next, copper chloride Cu two plus Cu two plus and Cl one minus. It is Cu Cl two. <coughs> Lead chloride Pb. Pb two plus and Cl one minus. It is Pb Cl two. Next, manganese chloride. It is Mn two plus manganese. It is Mn. Mn two plus Cl. One minus, so it is Mn Cl two. Zinc chloride, Zn two plus Cl one minus Zn Cl. <coughs> mercury chloride Hg. Mercury. It is Hg two plus Cl one minus Hg Cl. Barium chloride, Ba two plus Cl one minus Ba Cl two. Yes. Hope that you have understood. Please copy all these from there to here. Next, I will return sulfate salts. Observe it. Sulfates. First one, hydrogen sulfate. Hydrogen H one plus S four four two minus. Right. It becomes S two S four four. Next, sodium sulfate Na one plus S four four two minus. It becomes Na two S four four sodium sulfate. Potassium sulfate K one plus S four four two minus. It becomes K two S four four. Magnesium sulfate Mg two plus. Yes, four, four, two minus. 
get cancelled. It is just MgSO4. Calcium sulfate Ca2 plus SO4 2 minus. Just it is CaSO4. Copper sulfate Cu2 plus SO4 2 minus. Again, to get cancelled, CuSO4. Lead sulfate Pd2 plus SO4 2 minus. It becomes PbSO4. Zinc sulfate Zn uh, Zn2 plus SO4 2 minus. It is just Zn SO4. Iron sulfate Fe2 plus SO4 2 minus. It is FeSO4. And barium sulfate Ba2 plus SO4 2 minus. It is BaSO4. Another important one aluminium sulfate. Aluminium sulfate. Observe aluminium Al3 plus SO4 2 minus. So crossing over charges Al2 SO4 trines. Here are. So these are all sulfate salts. Please go for right. Here I have written some of the important carbonates. Observe this. All these are very important. So, first one is sodium carbonate. You are very familiar with washing soda. That is the common name of sodium carbonate. Sodium, it is Na. 1 plus. What about the carbonate? You can observe that. Carbonate is CO3 2 minus. It is CO3 2 minus crossing over charges it will be Na2CO3 got it and next one calcium carbonate this is Ca2 plus CO3 2 minus it is just CaCO3 calcium carbonate then magnesium carbonate Mg2 plus and CO3 2 minus the charges get cancelled the chemical formula of magnesium Carbonate is MgCO3. Copper carbonate Cu2 plus CO3 2 minus. This is CuCO3. Then zinc carbonate Zn2 plus CO3 2 minus. It is just on crossing over charges, it becomes ZnCO3. Next, aluminium carbonate. This is Al. What is its charge? 3 plus. And carbonate CO3 2 minus crossing over charges Al2 then CO3 thrice Al2 CO3 thrice is the chemical formula of aluminium carbonate. Okay, yeah, please go for copying from there to here. Now let's move on to writing the chemical formula of some of the nitrates. Here I have written. First one is lead nitrate. Lead, what is its atomic symbol? Pb. Charge, it is 2 plus. You can observe that here we have written Pb2 plus. Next, nitrate. Observe it. Here we have written nitrate NO3 1 minus. NO3 1 minus. Now crossing over charges, it becomes Pb1 and NO3 twice. Next second one potassium nitrate K1 plus nitrate NO3 1 minus can be written as KNO3 magnesium nitrate this is Mg2 plus NO3 1 minus crossing over charges Mg1 NO3 twice calcium Nitrate, calcium, Ca, what is its charge? It is 2 plus. Nitrate, NO3, charge 1 minus. Crossing over charges, it becomes Ca, NO3, twice. And one more important compound, silver nitrate. Silver atomic symbol, Ag. Charge 1 plus. Next, nitrate, NO3, charge 1 minus. Then crossing over charges, you can just write it as 
AgNO3. Followed? Yes, please copy this. Now, let's move on to some other compounds which we come across in the chapter chemical reactions and equations. Observe first one potassium iodide. What is its chemical formula? Here, first observe the elements that are involved potassium and iodine, right? Charge, what is the charge of potassium? 1 plus iodine, I minus. So, you have to go through this table. So, it will be just Ki, potassium iodide. Next, methyl hydroxide, it is CH3 methyl hydroxide, this is OH. Glucose, we know the molecular formula, it is C6 H12O6 methane this is CH4 because C4 plus H1 one, one, it will be CH4 nitrogen dioxide just you can write it directly NO2 silver bromide AG Br because AG 1 plus Br 1 minus then potassium dichromate it's important one K 1 plus dichromate Cr2O7 you can observe that dichromate Cr2O7 what is its charge 2 minus it becomes K2Cr2O7 then sodium bicarbonate sodium Na 1 plus bicarbonate HCO3 1 minus HCO3 1 minus it will be NaHCO3 NaHCO3 then one more potassium bicarbonate is it is K1 plus and bicarbonate HCO3 1 minus and the chemical formula becomes KHCO3 got it so these are the important compounds which we come across in the chapter chemical reactions and equations dear students here whatever the ions I have written in the table both cations and anions these are important please learn based on these only we can go for writing the chemical formula of many chemicals okay so practice them today itself then tomorrow we can commence the chapter chemical reactions and equations so with this let us stop the class thank you